Hello everybody. In today's tutorial, we'll be learning about EQ and all the different parameters that comes inside it. So let's get started. EQ or equalization is nothing but taking a bunch of frequencies and manipulating it. You can either increase certain levels of frequencies, lower certain other level of frequencies, cut a particular frequency, etc. So this is the work of an EQ or an equalization. Now let us look at Logic's EQ and understand how that works. So this is Logic's inbuilt EQ and this EQ, as you can see, there are eight bands of frequencies or eight slots. Let us look at the first band. So when you click this, this is the shape of the first band. So this band is called as a high pass filter or you can also say that as a low cut filter. The diagram illustrates that, right? So here you can see frequencies in the range of 1K, 2K, 3K, etc. So when this filter is on, only the frequencies at the higher end of the spectrum is allowed. In other words, the frequencies in the lower end of the spectrum gets cut, all right? So that is why this is called as high pass filter because only the higher frequencies are passed. In contrast to that, this is a low pass filter. So it's just the contrast to what we just saw. It allows all the low frequencies and cuts all the high ends of the spectrum. So that is why this is called as a low pass filter. And moving on, this is called as a shelf. The purpose of this is to either raise or lower frequencies at the two extremes of the spectrum. So when you click this, either you can raise the frequencies at this lower end or you can lower them. The similar uh, concept holds for the shelf available at this end. When you switch that on and when you increase it, you can either increase the frequencies at the higher end or you can lower the frequencies at the higher end. The four different bands available in the in between. Okay, so they are responsible for any changes that happens at the mid frequencies. All right. So for example, when you turn this on and when you raise it, the frequencies in between can be raised. All right. So these are just same bands that are repeated thrice. You can either use them multiple times if you need it or you can switch them off. So now that we have understood the different bands available in this plugin, let us go through a couple of more things in detail. Now let us look at the first line. The first line that is available in this EQ plugin depicts the frequency that gets affected when you move either of these bands. All right. For example, let us click the shelf. All right. So the moment you click it, this area gets highlighted. Can you see that this 7000 is the exact point of this dot here that exact frequency gets affected all right now let us move this dot you can see that this frequency is also getting changed right so that is the place where we are gonna manipulate the frequency or if you want to uh, try it out with this one you can immediately see that this comes as 474 hertz that is because the point the ball that is depicted there so that is exactly at 474 when you move it the frequency also gets changed so that is the purpose of this first line all right the second row available in this plugin gives us information about the gain that is associated with that frequency for example let us click this this band all right so it is at 220 244 hertz exactly and the gain is 4.4 db all right now in order to increase the gain you just have to press this ball and move up can you see that the the gain is also getting increased similarly if you want to lower it you just bring it down all right now this is at 0 db because the point associated with this band is here and it is exactly at zero level you can associate that zero level with this vertical column so this is zero all right so that is the purpose of the second line all right so it is associated with gain each band has its own frequency depicted here and each of those bands also have the amount of gain associated with that all right now let us look at the final row in this plugin. This final row depicts the Q factor of the frequencies. For example, let us look at this band and its Q factor is 0.41. All right. So Q factor is just how skinnier or how much wider the manipulation happens. All right. So for example, this is at 0.41. If you want this shape to get more widened, all right, all you need to do is just 
lower it down like that so how i do that is you just take two fingers and you touch your touch pad in your computer you just drag it down that way all right so when you drag it down it becomes skinnier and here you can see the q factor is more it is 27.0 if you want to widen that it's the same procedure except that you go upward all right so when you go upward the q factor gets widened and that is reflected here all right so that is the purpose of this last line there are a couple of other ways by which you can manipulate the frequency the gain and the q factor of of a frequency all right so when you bring your arrow closer to these two lines all right you can see that there are two horizontal arrows you can just use that as well in order to change the q factor okay now how can we change the gain so you just bring it near to this horizontal line that is exactly at the tip of this ball and then you just bring it up and down so in that way you can manipulate the gain there's another arrow called this the purpose of this is to change both the q factor and the gain so it can move sideways and it can move up and down all right if you want to change the frequency all you need to do is just press the point associated with that band and move it around okay now let us look at these four buttons that are available in our plugin. The first feature here is analyzer. So basically when you play something and when you put an EQ plugin inside it, when the analyzer is on, you can see waveforms associated with the track. For example, let us look at this track. Let's solo this track and play. When you switch off this analyzer, these uh, real-time frequency spectrum will not be seen. Alright, that is the purpose of analyzer. So basically post shows you the waveform after whatever manipulation we've done. Pre shows the signal before anything has happened. Alright, so let me show you something. Let us first raise this scale. Alright, you can raise it either up or down. Let me raise that a little bit and let me play. As of now, I have not done anything here, right? Now let us throw a high pass filter inside and probably bring it here. All right. Now pre is selected. As I said, pre shows us the signal before the processing. All right. Let me play it. Although I have put a high pass filter here, the signal available here still shows, right? That is because we have clicked pre. Now let us click post and look at what happens. Immediately, the signal that was available here, now you cannot see that. That is because we have cut all the low frequencies and we have allowed only the high frequency here. This is pre. It's post. Alright, so that is the purpose of analyzer. Let us look at Q-couple. So the purpose of Q-couple is to, you know, automatically change or alter the Q-factor depending upon the gain that was set. Alright, now without Q-couple, you can see that the Q-factor here is at 0.3 or 0.2, stuff like that. Now when I press Q-couple... There are some changes that are happening, right? So it automatically does that with respect to the amount of gain that we've set. The last feature available in an EQ is this small button called processing. So when we click this, we have a bunch of options. One is stereo, left only, right only, mid only and side only. So these are to manipulate the frequencies and those manipulations can be heard only in those particular positions. All right, let us click left only. And then when you do something, You can only hear the sound coming from your right earphones if you're wearing earphones. That is because in the left side of our earphones, I have programmed this audio in such a way that all these frequencies right up till 8K is cut. So there's practically very low signal coming out, right? In contrast to that, 
in my right ear the entire spectrum is coming out so obviously i can hear everything in my right so this is just a drastic way in order to explain what the options here does all right the last thing that can be done is with the help of this vertical column called as the gain so here itself you can increase or decrease the gain as well on the whole for example when i have this and then you have another shelf okay if you want to increase the gain of the entire processing that you've done all you need to do is go to this knob and just increase it or decrease it depending on the mix that you're doing also when you go to this factory default button when you click that you have a bunch of different presets that are available so you can just experiment there are loads of presets that are available in this plugin so you can just experiment maybe you have a guitar so you can throw in a guitar plugin and then you can just check if that is what you're going for all right i'll leave that up to you so yep that is how an eq plugin works in logic in the next tutorial, I'll be talking to you about how I use EQ in different tracks like vocal tracks, acoustic guitar tracks, bass guitars and in kicks. You can experiment the EQ that is available in your DAW. The concept is same everywhere. You can just play through it and you can find out the sound that best suits your track. That is the end of this video. I hope you guys learned something. If you need more tutorials on Logic Pro, this channel is for you. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.